Well, uh, if we had passed the legislation in 2018, the Clean Energy Jobs Bill, um, we would have had that there would have been a number of outstanding questions, details to be worked out that would have been worked out through rulemaking. Having the additional year to work on it, we're able to get some of those answers clarified and uh, be more specific in the bill. Uh, and I'll give you an example of that. We knew that, uh, so one of the, one of the, uh, one of the challenges with uh, doing a carbon pricing program is you don't want to, um, uh, to set it up in a way that Oregon manufacturers are just going to pick up their operations and move to another state and um, emit greenhouse gases there because global warming is a global problem. Uh, and so our preference would be to create a program where they can be kept in state under the program, put on a steady reduction diet over time. And um, so uh, we knew that we were going to have to have a third party analysis of which manufacturers are, that, that are heavy emitters uh, are trade exposed in a way that they really could not stay and function uh, if uh, we created a program that was too abrupt you know, for them. And so we were able to get that third-party ana analysis done uh, in uh, a group called Pivot. No, not Pivot. I'm sorry. I've, I've totally blanked on their name. Uh, uh, but they, uh, they did the analysis, involved a lot of conversations with the manufacturers coming to understand their, their needs. Uh, and that, uh, and that uh, their recommendations are incorporated in the bill. So legislators will be able to, you know, uh, vote on a bill where they understand just how an issue like that is being treated. And you'll see that in a number of areas. Areas that were uh, somewhat, um, that they were directive to the agency to do rulemaking, uh, but you'll see details in the bill when it comes out. And Senator Dembro, 